Hi, everyone. My name is Kyle Marshall. And I'm Dave. And this is Kyle and Dave versus The Machine. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a little old film that did, what did, when did it debut? March? 1999. 1999. And uh, it's about bottles, messages, and, uh, and the ocean. And, the, and, and seemingly the power of love. Is it? Is, is that what it's about? Um, this film stars Kevin Costner and Robin Wright. And I don't remember who directed it because I don't want to remember who directed it. Kyle, do you remember who directed this? Not off the top of my head, no. Uh, it is long and it is about um, alcoholism. Is that fair? Are we getting too glib? Do we need to? <laughs> Dave, I'm pretty sure your middle name is glib. <laughs> so I don't know how we can get more than uh, what you already bring to the table. Uh, all right. Well, to be honest, we reviewed this movie so long ago, Kyle, that I do not actually remember what it was about. I remember that uh, Paul Newman is like the one saving grace of this movie. That is the nicest thing I can say about it. <laughs> he looked great. Well, in he that deserves hat. he deserves better than this being his, I think, third to last film. I feel like we deserved better. So, I mean, just to cut to the chase, uh, if you haven't guessed already, uh, Kyle and I have reviewed movies from 1999, and this was our pick for the worst movie, perhaps ever made, but certainly in this year. Um, Kyle, I don't know. Do you do you have any opinion about that at all? Yes, I mean, I think that the idea here is that I have probably seen worse made movies, meaning that, you know, it, it's not that it's out of focus or it's edited poorly or really even at the end of the day acted badly. It's just that every decision from script to screen is so ill-advised that I sat there in shock. I still remember this was actually we watched this in the before times where we could actually see each other and be in the same room as one another and there got to a point in this movie where i was like it must be wrapping up right there was over an hour left of film and i was gobsmacked literally and truly the entire definition of that word of like how is this movie still going on and i think you and i just sat there in shock for the last hour <laughs> that it just kept going for a story that doesn't need to be over two hours long certainly not two and a half there was definitely some uh, synchronized groaning, um, head head and hair clenching, um, <laughs> and at the end, I think a little bit of napping, some dozing off, and uh, and I mean, I, a spoiler alert: the ending is f frightening, <laughs> brutal, uh, ill-advised, stupid. I don't know. Well, I, one one thing we didn't mention is the fact that this is, of course, adapted from a Nicholas Sparks story. And I, I have to assume this is probably what is in the book as well. I don't care to actually find out the actual uh, answer to that. But it's a big old spoiler alert for a 21-year-old film. This ends by him thinking, finally deciding, I'm going to love this woman. I'm going to love Robin Wright so much. I'm going to sail to her. And then on his way, he meets another family that he sees a shipwrecked. So he jumps into the ocean and he dies saving this family. End of movie. And again, it's just a baffling decision to put into this movie where the two leads have no chemistry in the first place. And then we add in a tragedy, I guess. I mean, it is a tragedy, but I'm just saying it's like, why, why is this here? And I don't know the answer to that. The film is a tragedy is what, what it is. I, I am amazed, actually, Kyle, that you remember those details. Uh, in my mind, uh, all I remember is sort of waking up on the couch and he died. And I was glad that it was over. So, uh, yeah. It's just like, thank God, <laughs> stop. It's, it's, uh, I think that's a good succinct way of putting uh, onto video my true feelings about this film. Uh, oh, yeah, we can air quote. We're not on a podcast anymore. Yeah. yeah. T time has forgotten message in a bottle and it is probably for the better. Sadly, I think... It will wash up on shore again one day. The alien race who uh, overtakes us will be like, oh, like just bobbing in the ocean, a DVD copy of Message in a Bottle. And they'll open it up and be like, they made this shit? And it's just going to pop up when everybody thinks it's over. And the only movie we'll be left with is Message in a Bottle. It's sad, sad fate. <laughs> if you want to hear our full 
conversation about the backstory and the themes of the movie, go and click the link in the description below. Yeah, we do have a podcast. You, viewer, who's watching this, you need to hear our, the rest of this conversation. Down in the description below, there's a way that you can see or listen to the entire podcast. On the presumption that we know how to put links in the captions below, check it out. And uh, we do have a podcast with the totally believable fiction that a robot that Kyle has developed and built is going to end the world unless we watch shitty movies like Message in a Bottle. Not just, it's not just shitty movies. It's movies from an entire year that just include shitty movies occasionally. It is uh, a rich and deep and quality fiction that you will be swept up in. Join us. <laughs> right? this, Join us. This, this could yes. be our new catch. That's our catchphrase? Yes. <laughs>